It is officially game over for Sean P. Diddy Combs. He is now backed into a corner. The feds allegedly have video evidence of his freak offs that Cassie and other alleged victims have described. And um, speaking of victims, according to CNN's explosive expose just published mere minutes ago, they are set to testify in front of a federal grand jury in New York sometime soon. Let's go over this article and the implications that it has for Diddy and his sons as well. It's entitled Exclusive, a federal grand jury may soon hear from Sean Diddy Combs' accusers. And it reads as following. Federal investigators are preparing to bring accusers of mogul Sean Diddy Combs before a federal grand jury. Two sources familiar with the probe tell CNN, signaling the U.S. Justice Department is moving toward potentially seeking an indictment of Combs. Possible witnesses have been notified by investigators that they could be brought in to testify in front of a federal grand jury in New York City, according to one source. Bringing individuals who have filed civil lawsuits against Combs before a grand jury would mark a significant escalation in the government's ongoing investigation involving the producer and Bad Boy Records founder. So when they talk about individuals who have filed lawsuits, who are we talking about? We're talking about Cassie, right? We are talking about um, Rodney, and we're talking about many other people, including um, the model uh, Crystal and just many, many other people as well. FYI. Combs has been named in eight civil lawsuits since November, seven directly accusing him of actual assault. One of the eight lawsuits filed by former girlfriend Cassie Ventura has been settled. Another lawsuit accused his son, Christian Combs, of actual A, and Sean Combs is accused of aiding and abetting. So we're going to talk about whether or not his children could actually face their own uh, criminal charges as well. So stick around for that. A spokesperson for the Homeland Security Investigations Agency, otherwise known as HSI, declined to comment on the existence of a grand jury, but noted the investigation remains ongoing. These potential witnesses have not yet been prepped for testimony, but both sources told CNN, cautioning that HSI investigators are still in the process of gathering evidence and questioning potential sources of information in their federal probe into Combs. One source said investigators are being thorough and taking their time to ensure that an indictment, should there be one, is, quote, bulletproof. They are not messing around. This is a one-shot deal, and they want to make sure that they have not left a single stone unturned, and I do not blame them. You know, a lot of people, myself included, have been wondering what's going on. The raids happened a while ago. Like, where are the charges? Like, is everything okay? And so they are just assuring us that they want to make sure that they nail him on everything they could possibly nail him on. Grand juries comprised of ordinary citizens are critical tools used by prosecutors, providing both an investigative function in approving the subpoenaing of the documents and witnesses and a vote on whether to criminally charge suspects. The use of a grand jury signals a particular case has moved beyond the preliminary stage where the investigators generally assess whether possible violations of the law are believed to have been committed. So here they just hinted, listen, we are past the preliminary stage of this investigation, guys. We are moving on to pressing charges, meaning like we're wrapping things up. We're crossing our T's and dotting our I's and seeking justice a little, you know, with one boot ahead of the other. Feds have interviewed multiple Combs accusers. So Combs' homes in Los Angeles and Miami were searched back in March. At that time, CNN reported that the rapper and entrepreneur was the target of a federal investigation carried out by a Department of Homeland Security team that handles human trafficking crimes, and the ongoing investigation included a focus on ex-trafficking, according to law enforcement sources. Now, additional sources told CNN that the majority of the plaintiffs who had filed civil suits against Combs have been interviewed by federal investigators. Wow. I wonder how this goes, because remember, there have been Jane Doe lawsuits against Diddy. So what happens in those cases? Will they still be able to testify under Jane Doe identities? If you are in the legal field, feel free to let me know in the comment section. And in fact, I'm going to ask a quick question right here to my 
trusty ChatGPT. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem as though that is the case. Quote, in the United States, anonymity for civil suit victims, even using pseudonyms like Jane Doe, is generally not allowed during, during trial testimony. There are a few reasons for this. The first being the right to confrontation. The defendant has a Sixth Amendment right to confront their accusers in court. This includes the ability to see them, question them directly, and assess their credibility through body language and demeanor. Anonymity would hinder this right. Number two, discovery process. The pretrial discovery process allows both sides to gather information about the case. This includes witness identities and statements. Anonymity would make this process difficult. And number three, fairness and credibility. Opposing counsel needs to be able to challenge the testimony of witnesses. Anonymity would make it harder to investigate a witness's background or potential biases. However, there are some exceptions where limited anonymity might be granted. And those two exceptions are as follows. The first being witness protection programs. In rare cases, if a witness is in fear of retaliation, the court might allow them to testify with a voice modulator or other measures to obscure their identity. Uh, in the second case, highly sensitive cases, in some cases involving actual A or witness protection concerns, the judge might allow a pseudonym to be used or limit public access to certain parts of the transcript. It's important to note that these are exceptions and the decision to grant any anonymity rests with the judge. In the case of Sean Combs' accusers, they would likely have to testify in person and reveal their identities if called before a grand jury or at trial. Continuing on with the article, Combs has vehemently denied claims from many of the civil suits, but has not responded to all of the allegations. In December of 2023, after four lawsuits had been filed against him, Combs posted a fierce denial on his social media, writing that sickening allegations had been made by accusers looking for a quick payday. Let me quote, let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. But remember, that was before the evidence dropped. And that, and um, by that, I mean that horrifying, horrifying, horrifying video of him um, attacking Cassie. CNN previously reported in March par a law enforcement source that the investigation stems from many of the SA allegations put forth in several of the civil lawsuits against Combs. CNN <clears throat> CNN has learned that the scope of the investigation is much larger, focusing on ex-trafficking, money laundering, and illegal rugs. In addition to human trafficking, HSI also investigates narcotic smuggling and other organized criminal activity. Quote, it's much bigger than just these lawsuits, one of the sources familiar with the scope of the investigation said. Federal investigators are now digging deeper, and some of the accusers have been questioned numerous times, a source said. A second source corroborates this current state of the investigation. Accusers who have spoken to federal agents during the investigation have been actively cooperating with the investigators, with some handing over evidence they believe may be helpful in the probe, one source said. Investigators are also bringing in new individuals for questioning, including corroborating witnesses of accusers. So I'm thinking those might be families, friends, other bodyguards, etc. And then when they talk about these people handing over some of their own evidence, I'm thinking of Rodney and the tapes that he claimed that Diddy made him um, record. I'm also thinking of that woman who recently just came out and said that she still has the outfit that she was wearing when Diddy allegedly, um, you know, as aid her, like there must be a mountain of evidence to go through. Because one thing that Rodney said in his lawsuit is that dummy Diddy likes to record everything. And I feel like those are some of the things that the feds got during their raid, like the evidence, everything they needed to charge Diddy was handed to them on a silver platter in his own homes, in his safes. Speaking of that, here we go. Evidence includes video from Combs's residences. You big dummy. Federal agents are in possession of video taken inside of Combs's recently searched residences, a source said. It's unclear whether the video was seized during the raids or whether investigators obtained video from individuals they have been questioning. They are contacting people that they found on the tapes, a source told CNN. At least one male ex-worker 
who claims he has been victimized by Combs, has been questioned during the investigation, one source said, adding that this individual was seen in footage that is in possession of the federal investigators. In some of the lawsuits against Combs, accusers have alleged that they were informed after the fact that they were recorded having intimacy without giving their consent to be filmed. Combs has not responded to this specific accusation, but he dismissed all alleged wrongdoing in a blanket denial he posted in December of 2023, which we know is not credible, especially now that that video of the hotel beatdown was released. In some of the civil suits, Combs is alleged of rugging multiple accusers in the two most recent lawsuits filed against Combs within the past week, former fashion student April Lampros and former model Crystal McKinney both accused Combs of rugging them. In Lampros's suit, she claims that Combs forced her to take ecstasy, then demand she have intercourse with one of his former girlfriends before graping her. This truly is just terrible, sick, depraved stuff. You are a rich man and you are young and you've got children. Why are you doing this stuff instead of just enjoying your life, traveling the world, you know, basking in the sun on yachts? Like, what are you doing? Combs has not responded to CNN's request for comment since the two lawsuits were filed. Combs was also accused in a civil suit filed last November of intentionally ragging and SAing Joy Dickerson Neal back in 1991 when she was a college student. Though his legal team has filed a motion to dismiss portions of this suit, Dickerson Neal also accused Combs of revenge corn, claiming that Combs secretly recorded the SA. Days later, a male friend revealed to Dickerson Neal that he had viewed it according to her claim. Yikes. Combs' team did not respond to specific allegations of rugging or secret recordings, but a spokesperson at the time said the complaint was, quote, made up and not credible. Kind of like Diddy's denial on Instagram. Oop. Discrediting the accusations as, quote, purely a money grab in their motion to dismiss, which is still pending, attorneys for Combs called Dickerson Neal's allegations false, offensive, and salacious. Well, we'll see about that. He said that about other claims, you know, including Cassie's, and look what happened there. His lies were exposed. I am so happy to see that this investigation is moving forward, okay? So like I said at the top of this video, I do have many legal questions to ask. And, um, you know, I did, I, 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 unfortunately, it's kind of short notice, so I have not been able to get in contact with my YouTube lawyer friends who typically pop on this channel. So um, Dimitri Shak Shaknovich of DShack Law and Stephanie of Wine and Chill, make sure to support their channels. They're really amazing. Um, so I turned over to Google's Gemini, which is like chat GPT on crack. It's so good um, to ask some legal questions, shall we? So this, these are the highlights, basically. If you, like me, are kind of like lost in the bog of all of this like legal uh, jargon, they're saying that the, there are a couple of highlights here to take note of. And some of these highlights, including the broadening of this investigation, it seems like there are going to be, if you know Diddy is charged, there are going to be several charges raining down, ranging from money laundering, illegal rugs, um, possible like, you know, forcing people to take them and uh, potentially ex trafficking as well. Um, they're, they're also saying like, take note of the amount of witnesses. Like he has about seven or eight lawsuits pending. And then there are many law witnesses connected to all these people. Each alleged victim has at least a couple of witnesses surrounding them, right? Including family, friends, including bodyguards, et cetera, or just other people, um, you know, coworkers, et cetera. And, um, you know, of course, we also got to the part about the video evidence being there and s various victims handing in their own pieces of evidence. It's a lot, you guys, a lot. Now, um, when it comes to another question, which is how long after a grand jury appearance do indictments typically get announced? Gemini says that there isn't a set time frame for indictments after a grand jury appearance. The announcement can happen anywhere from shortly after the appearance to taking weeks or even months. This And it also depends on a few things, including the complexity of the case. More intricate cases with a lot of evidence might take longer for the grand jury to review and decide on indictments. Then the other thing it depends on is prosecutorial strategy. 
Sometimes prosecutors might strategically delay announcing an indictment to gather more evidence or for other reasons. But specifically in the Diddy case, the article mentions investigators are being thorough to build a strong case for a potential indictment. This suggests the announcement could take some time following the grand jury appearances. So don't hold your breath for the time being. They really want to make sure this is like a vacuum sealed case. Okay, let's get into Diddy's children, most notably his son, Christian Combs, was accused in, I think, at least two lawsuits. I know Rodney had one, Lil Rod. And then another accuser had also claimed that some, he had he did something to her on a yacht, like he took advantage of her on a yacht. So could he face charges? Here we go. The article hints at this possibility, but it's not certain, and here's why. One lawsuit accuses Combs' son, Christian Combs, of S.A. The article mentions investigators are interviewing accusers and those who might corroborate their accounts. This could include people connected to Christian Combs' alleged assault. The investigation seems broader than just the lawsuits. If evidence suggests Christian Combs was involved in trafficking or other crimes being investigated, he could face charges. However, there's no clear indication yet that Christian Combs is a target of the investigation. The article focuses on Sean Combs being the central target. Now, what kind of charges can Diddy look forward to facing if he does actually face charges, right? Because again, this is a very, very, very broad investigation. So it kind of feels like they could be pretty much anything under the sun. And so here's what Gemini had to say about that. And I also did ask how many years he can be potentially facing. The response reads as follows. The exact charges against Sean Combs, if any are announced, are difficult to predict definitively without knowing the specifics of the investigation. However, based on the details you provided, here's a breakdown of potential charges and their associated penalties. The first one being trafficking. This is a serious federal crime with harsh penalties. Minimum sentences can vary depending on the specific circumstances, but it can carry a mandatory minimum of 10 years to life in prison. S.A. Federal penalties for S.A. also vary depending on the severity of the assault and whether a weapon was involved. It can range from a minimum of five years to life in prison. I do also want to ask, um, you know, you know when they say if a weapon was involved, does for do, do drugs count as a weapon in order to carry out SA? Because they can incapacitate people, right? And apparently they do. In SA cases, Rugs can be considered a weapon if the perpetrator forced the victim to consume them. And many people who accused Diddy said that that was like what he used in order to carry out his doing, including Cassie, Rodney, Crystal, etc. And here's why. Incapacitation, the use of rugs to render a victim unconscious or significantly impaired is a common tactic in SA. Rugs can take away a victim's ability to fight back, consent, or even remember the assault. Control and vulnerability, forcing someone to take them creates a situation of extreme control and vulnerability for the victim. This can be seen as a weapon used to coerce the victim into actual activity. And lastly, legal recognition. Many jurisdictions recognize the use of rugs in SA as a weapon. This can lead to harsher penalties for the perpetrator if convicted. Yes, I love that for Diddy. And I hope that that is the case and that that is taken seriously. Now let's head back to the charges that he can, Diddy can potentially face. So we went through trafficking, we went through SA. Now we're gonna touch on money laundering. Money laundering convictions can carry significant prison sentences, often 10 years or more. And uh, now when it comes to rug crimes, federal trafficking charges also come with varying penalties depending on the type and quantity of rugs involved. It can range from a few years to life in prison. I personally didn't understand why Diddy could be facing money laundering uh, charges. So of course I had to ask, and this is what I received. Apparently, it might be a link to that trafficking, the ex-trafficking. More specifically, money laundering is often used to conceal profits from illegal activities. If investigators believe Combs' organization was involved in ex-trafficking, they might suspect money laundering was used to hide those profits. For example, income from forced prostitution might 
be funneled through legitimate businesses to appear legal. And then they also talk about creating shell companies to mask the source of funds and how apparently Bad Boy Records was already investigated in some capacity for money laundering back in the early 2000s. Anyway, guys, that's all I know for now. In regards to this Diddy situation, it seems like things are heating up and he almost certainly is going to be facing some very serious charges that, God willing, will potentially put him away in prison for the rest of his life. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more updates on the Diddy saga. I do typically have lawyers on my channel to unpack a lot of the legal jargon, so keep your eyes peeled for that as well. And I do also cover just more lighthearted celebrity gossip and reality TV recaps. But in the meantime, let me know how you feel about Diddy's victims potentially testifying before a grand jury pretty soon. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.